Studies suggest that sugar can be one to eight times as addictive as certain street drugs, primarily because it activates the brain's reward pathways in a similar way. This shows just how powerful sugars hold on us. But not all the sugars are created equal, are they? So, what types of sugars are responsible for this effect? And are some sugars worse for your health than the others? Well, while there are dozens of distinct types of sugar, two stand out as the most commonly talked about, especially for those managing diabetes or trying to eat healthier. Glucose and fructose. Glucose is often considered bad because it has immediate effect on spiking your blood sugar. Fructose, on the other hand, is famous for its potential to cause long-term damage, especially when consumed in concentrated forms like high fructose corn syrup. But here is where it gets interesting. Is fructose actually worse than glucose? What does it really do to your body? And why has it earned such a bad reputation? The answer may surprise you. Let's dive in. Is fructose really worse than glucose? And what does it actually do to the body? While fructose has a bad reputation, the full story might surprise you. But what does this mean for diabetics or those trying to eat healthier? How to eat fructose without the harms? Let's dive in. Fructose often gets a worse reputation than glucose, and for a good reason. Research shows that excess fructose, especially from added sugars, can harm your health. For example, a study by Stanhope found that people drinking fructose-sweetened drinks instead of glucose-sweetened ones gained more organ fat, had higher blood fat levels, and became less insulin sensitive. Is it because glucose is better? Well, actually, fructose pushes the liver to produce extra fat, more than glucose, which raises blood fat and disrupts the insulin sensitivity. This effect isn't just limited to humans. A study by Softic in mice in that study found that even with the same calorie intake, fructose caused more weight gain, worse blood sugar control, and liver enlargement compared to glucose. Now, these findings show how fructose uniquely impacts the liver and the metabolism. Fructose also boosts liver fat production more than glucose, according to the American Heart Association. This leads to higher blood fat levels, such as triglycerides, increasing the risk of heart disease. When consumed, most fructose is processed in the liver, unlike glucose, because it bypasses the normal control for fat production, causing fat to accumulate around the organs. Over time, this leads to elevated cholesterol, disrupted insulin signaling, and poor blood sugar control. Before I get into details though, if you would like a concise, well-designed summary of this video in a colorful PDF, I've got something special for you. Click in the link in the description below to download the summary that's perfect for reviewing and reinforcing what you have learned. And here's how it works. Fructose is absorbed in the small intestine and sent to the liver directly. It doesn't cause a blood sugar spike like the glucose because it bypasses insulin regulation. Instead, fructose gets converted into compounds like glyceraldehyde and DHAP used for energy or stored as fat when consumed in excess. While glucose provides immediate energy, fructose takes a slower route, playing an indirect role in energy production. The best way to consume fructose, if you really want it, is through whole fruits. Unlike the processed foods or sugary drinks that contains fructose, fruits contain fiber and nutrients that help the body process fructose a lot easier and better. Fiber in fruits slow digestion and sugar absorption, preventing sharp blood sugar spikes and fat buildup. Plus, fruits only contain small amounts of fructose compared to sodas and juices, way smaller. They are packed with vitamins and minerals and antioxidants that also reduce the inflammation 
and support your overall health and your liver health. Now, not all fructose really is created equal. Whole fruits offer really a safe way to enjoy fructose unless you have advanced diabetes or your blood sugar spikes with every fruit you eat. That's a different story. Because fruits really have a lot of fiber and nutrients that protects your body, making them vastly different from any sugary drink out there. Eating whole fruits can also improve the reduced inflammation, support your metabolism. However, like I said, too much fructose from processed foods, even eating from too much fruit, anything too much will eventually build up and it will cause fat accumulation in your liver. For those of you managing insulin resistance, it might help to limit fructose mostly, especially from processed sources, but avoiding fruits altogether is not very ideal. Now, vegetables are a great alternative if you want to reduce the fruit intake, which is great, because plants are offering over 5,000 plant-based phytonutrients, not to mention the vitamins in there. These compounds support the immune system, reduce the inflammation, and protect against the chronic conditions. Prioritizing vegetables while eating moderate amounts of fruit can keep you healthy and energized. So should diabetics avoid fruit? Well, it depends. People with type 2 diabetes might need to limit fructose, especially from the drinks, like I said, or processed foods. Now, whole fruits are much less concerning, particularly the low glycemic options like berries and apples, granny apples, green apples, for example. For those with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or older adults with slower metabolisms, I would say still monitor your fructose intake even it comes from the fruits. Whole fruits in moderation can still provide some benefits. If you are getting fructose from multiple sources like say sugary drinks, processed foods, and on top of that you eat fruit, you're thinking that oh, you're doing a favor for yourself, well all of them are at the end of the day, they're fructose. So it is important to find that balance and only get your fructose from fruits such as berries, citrus, kiwis, and always avoid juices even if it is a fruit juice. And definitely no to sugary drinks of all sorts. Research shows that replacing fructose with other carbs can improve blood sugar control, actually. For example, 40 to 50 grams of glucose or fructose don't spike your blood sugar as much. But if you go over 100 grams a day, then you may have problems. It can raise your cholesterol and triglyceride levels as well. And reducing fructose will lower the inflammation and improve your overall health. The key is, again, focusing on low glycemic whole fruits instead of those sugary beverages or fruit juices. Here's an example of a day where a diabetic can consume 40 grams of fructose from fruits that is spread out for better management of blood sugar levels. Let's make a meal plan. Let's say breakfast. Let's include a small banana that is not very ripe, approximately one small portion containing around just six grams of fructose and another six grams of glucose. Additionally, you can do a medium-sized apple if you want to do another day. For example, you can do 11 grams of fructose that comes from that and 11 grams of glucose that comes from that medium apple. For a snack, let's say you can go for a cup of strawberries that offers 3 grams of fructose and 3 grams of glucose. Now, let's say for lunch, if you are going for a medium orange for your fruit, that supplies you 6 grams of fructose and 6 grams of glucose. Let's say you want to have a snack. You can have a 1 cup of blueberries which contains around 3 grams of fructose and 3 grams of glucose. Not much, right? And at dinner, if you want to have half of a medium mango, it will deliver you 5 grams of fructose and 5 grams of glucose. Now, this is a balanced, a practical way to include 40 grams of fructose from whole fruits across the day while maintaining stable blood sugar levels. Now, having said that, you don't want to have a lot of other carbs in that food plan, otherwise they're going to pile up. You're going to have to pair thoughtful food choices that will make a big difference. For example, if you're eating your veggies and your protein before your fruits, that's going to definitely reduce the blood sugar spikes as well. Just 20 minutes a day of walk can reduce your insulin resistance so much more that it will allow you to enjoy those fruits a few times a day. 
A lot of people avoid physical activity, but again, it boosts your insulin sensitivity, helping your cells to use glucose and your liver accumulate less fat. Exercise will also support your metabolic health, your mitochondria. It will make it easier to process all the natural sugars that comes in the foods that are high in fiber, that brings you the antioxidants and vitamins and fruits. But by staying active, you are basically, even if it is fructose that comes from a fruit, you are using it up, not letting liver turn that fructose into fat. However, it is very hard to burn the fructose that comes in high fructose corn syrup because it is so concentrated that it's almost impossible for you to burn that off. If you want to learn more about the best fruits for diabetics, watch this video as well before you go.